What's up? Welcome in Hogan Johns back together. Vacation time is over, John Z. I like to use this time of year, the start of training camp, as our new year for the podcast. Year eight. Year freaking eight of this podcast. How time flies. Wow. We started in training camp of 2015. Mark Dressman. And no. Who is that? John Fox. Yes. It all blends together. <laughs> We're now forgetting the years. <laughs> yes, that was John yes, Fox. Dressman was 13 and 14. Foxy. Our guy Foxy was 15. Yeah. Thank Not you our guy, the, by the way. Well, well, thank you for all the sound bites. No, don't care. Yeah, my iPad's not charged. We do not have John Fox today on the podcast. I apologize because that is where he lives in infamy on my iPad. No, he's coaching in the league now. Is he oh, not? yeah, he's on the Colts. We should have J.J. Stankovic come on and just give us a breakdown of John Fox at Colts training camp every day. My understanding is that John Fox only took that job because he gets to hang out in the steakhouses of Indianapolis now year round. Yeah, he missed prime, right? Yes, no, the place he, he just, found it. The hangout he found it in Indy during the combine. So doesn't now he's he have there. a job though where he doesn't even have to be in Indy? <laughs> Probably. Can he be on his boat in Marco Island and be like, "Yep, I'm working," giving his thoughts? Yeah. Didn't he get like one of those analyst positions where you don't really have to be there? Am I wrong? <laughs> or is he like senior defensive assistant? He just needs to be. I, I think he's there every day. Okay. I want to say Stephen Holder for the Athletic did a story on him where the the role is actually more active than you would think for some of these other analysts. Okay, yeah, they do vary depending on which one. Advisor, but, uh, analyst, whatever you want to call them. Well, you know what? We are two head coaches removed from John Fox now, and uh, we are in year eight of the podcast. Is the headline? Uh, welcome in. We appreciate all of you that are still with us after all these years for some reason. Um, but. You're here. The Bears are the pretty much the same team they are every year. They're not. We've They're seen not. we've seen okay, eight years. We're going into year eight. We've seen one legitimately good team. Okay. Technically two teams that made the playoffs, but I don't even count that second playoff team. They got in because of an extra playoff spot, which is a legit thing now, but it was the COVID year and they got a lot of help there in week. 17 to get in and then they got their butts kicked um it's i what i was trying to say though it says a lot about the loyalty of our listeners viewers on youtube however you consume the podcast that you've been here through all this um nonsense that the two of us do but also the nonsense that the bears tend to put out on the football field from time to time so thank you very much you know what i missed today actually seeing players report yes i agree the good old days of Bourbon A where they'd show up in their cars. Do you remember when Jake Cutler showed up in that brown conversion van? Yes. Now, that was something. Like, that was something interesting. Yeah. Today, nothing. I did see a Ferrari. A blue saw a Tesla. Ferrari. Green with Tesla. dealer plates. You saw a green Tesla? Green Tesla pull up. That's kind of cool. Um, Yeah, I... <sighs> I agree with you. I wish for one day they would just let us kind of hang out in the players parking lot and like just one day. Like how about when Josh Bellamy showed up wearing a t-shirt with his own face on it and he was cruising around on the um the hoverboard. Oh yeah. Um what was his brand again? Didn't he have like Oh, I forget. I just remember the shirt. It was his face. Drip something. Something and then, like, yeah. then he's like, then he's in trouble and going to jail for all that. Or how about the year? This might be the same year that Tariq Cohen came in on that. What's that car the called? Slingshot. The slingshot came flying in yeah. to Urban A. I think that was our and last year there. Then he did donuts and got in trouble with Matt Nagy. That is a true story. Yeah. Um, Those are fun reporting days. Right. We miss all that now. We also have to rely on Tom Pelissero to tell us that Robert Quinn's there. That, that's another part of it. It's like part of us being there is to see who's actually there and who's maybe not there. So anyway, that was part of the news today. Robert Quinn and Roquan Smith did show up. 
but uh, we don't know if they're going to practice tomorrow. Holding in, hanging out. Hanging out? Yes. Yeah. I like how you put that. Uh, but we were there. Today was report day. Wanted to make sure we got an episode out to you today. Uh, thank you to Kevin Fishbane for holding down the fort last week as everybody else involved in this podcast forgot I was on vacation. You forgot I was on vacation seven times last <laughs> week. You counted the text? At least seven times. I think it was more than that. It was like Monday. Hey, when are we doing the podcast? Tuesday. After I told you I was out of town. Hey, when are we doing I'm the podcast? I'm also infamous for not having like complete text messages where it shows up in like three or four. Like a stream of consciousness going on. Oh, you text in like three different texts? Yes. I'm, I'm just okay one long that. paragraph. It's like boom, boom, boom. I'm okay with that. Because I've had, I've had like, um, let's just say texts from NFL people. <laughs> you ever get those ones that are like a hundred words in a text? Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, couldn't you just like, I think when you've gone over what, 30 words, it should be a phone call. Yes. I was just about to say that. Just call me. Yeah. Just, just pick up the phone. Just call me. Yeah. I'm with you. Uh, at least you didn't do that last week. Otherwise, I think I would have blocked your number. <laughs> Whatever. We're back. It was good to be back. Uh, report day is definitely not the same. I am admittedly more excited about there being a practice tomorrow and getting out there on the practice field in the sun. Technically, the first open practice to the public is not until Thursday, but there tomorrow is community day. And there will be different groups. So there will be some fans out there. And we should mention that one of those groups is the Highland Park Giants football team, the high school football team there. Um, and as our good friend Kevin Fishbane put on Twitter earlier, the Bears also donated uh, $80,000 to the Highland Park. Uh, let me make sure I get the fund right. Um, and the NFL matched it as well. Uh, the Highland Park Community Foundation and then the NFL Foundation matched that $80,000 donation. So nice gesture by the Bears. Um, and it'll be cool to have the football team among many groups. That, so there'll be people out there tomorrow. There'll be a little bit of a buzz going on. Yeah, nice gesture by the Bears. Um, absolutely worthy. Just tragic story still out of Highland Park. Uh, but yes, I am excited to see who the Bears starting offensive tackles are since Matty Bufluis wouldn't say that today uh, it's going to be interesting especially when you sign two new guys <laughs> right before camp begins that tells you how much they don't like Tevin Jenkins and maybe even Larry Borum and how much time they want to give Braxton Jones right now I, that's just what stands out to me well look the Braxton Jones story was kind of a cool fun one during OTAs and minicamp but it was like are they really gonna hit, put a fifth round guy who played at Southern Utah out there with their quarterback investment here in it, Justin Fields. Like, you know it what? It didn't seem plausible. It, it, you know what? It's the Bears, man. It did seem plausible. <laughs> we covered this team for an entire training camp in preseason, and then they decided to move Kyle Long from right guard to right tackle just for the hell of it. Didn't do it at all. Throughout well, camp. okay. They did, I, I, no, they did sign Josh Sitton that year. That's fine. Okay, but to Still. your point, like it was like, okay, it's game week, go to right tackle. Yes. And I believe I think he played like Jordan. a day. Remember Jordan Mills became like a week one starter as a rookie? Yeah. That's a good point. So too. we've seen some things, Adam Hogg. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I, I was ready corrected. to believe it. If he was I ready, can... he was ready. Now that you you're, say you're that, really not I... ready. Yeah. Now you say that, maybe. Look. Here's what's interesting. Okay, we're going to start with the Riley Reef thing then. So they they signed Riley Reef like two minutes before uh, the press conference starts today. Riley Reef at this stage in his career, in my opinion, is a solid um, tackle option who gives you versatility at left and right side, who, quite frankly, has never been dominant. And at times in the last couple of years, especially, has been uh, iffy, but good enough to, to to play. Okay, if that makes sense. 
he would probably be, having not obviously graded out his games, if he were to be part of the grades, and I guess he will be this year, I'm guessing he would end up as like kind of a low-end starter type range, if that makes sense. Is he better than Jason Peters? Maybe. Was last year? Probably not. Um, is he better than what they have now? Maybe. But here's the thing. You saw the Schefter report on the money, didn't you? Regardless of where it comes out, they paid him like a starter. He's going to play. They? Yeah. 12 and, a, 12 and a half million? Up to 12 and a half. I think you report, I think Schefter said it would be 10, up to 12 and a half he could earn. There were some other tweets out there that were like, it might end up being eight or nine. Regardless, that's starter money. Is he better than Braxton Jones? Yes, that's he's really better. Question, right? I yes. mean, Braxton I, Jones could point. in. He could end up being better, but right now he's Riley Reeves better. By the end of the year. Um, I think Bears fans, when they think of Riley Reef, they think of a certain Cleo Mack throwing him into the ground with his one arm. It's one of my favorite Cleo Mack highlights. Like that happened. That's on tape. Bears are okay with it. It's all a matter of who you have and who you feel comfortable with, and obviously the Bears felt like they needed a veteran. Not a rookie. It's not Tevin Jenkins. It's not Larry Borum. That's all a problem. That's why you have Riley Reef. <sighs> Let me put it this way. I'm glad they signed somebody. Uh, I think Riley, Riley Reef makes a lot of sense. Um, he's 33 years old. There's a world in which they're paying him this money and he doesn't play all the games. He didn't last year. Played 12 and I, games for the Bengals. Didn't play in the playoffs, right, because of an ankle injury. And ideally, you want these young kids to still beat them out. It seemed like a little bit of an over, overpay, didn't it? This is where you wonder what the competition is. But at this point, agents will say what they say to get max value for their guy. So you can't yeah. fault them on that. Yeah. Well, again, I think it's good they brought in reinforcements. They badly needed it. The pads go on on Saturday. Let's see how this all shakes out. Michael Schofield, too, makes a lot of sense. I don't think his money is as high. I don't know. We even see reported money on that yet. I don't know. No. But his opportunity at right guard is still wide open for sure. No, the whole spot's wide open. He's, he's your starter right now, is he not? Here's my hunch on this, and maybe I'll be wrong. I feel like because Sam Mustafer's here, he seems to be well respected. My hunch is that Sam Mustafer's still out there with the ones. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah, to but start. What happens next Tuesday? I don't. Yeah, to your point, I think Schofield's. Like one day after pads, who's your starting right card? <laughs> I don't know if he'll do it that fast, but maybe after the. Things can't happen that fast. Sometimes, you know what? Let's go back to the rise of Jordan Mills. <laughs> yeah, that was like week. I think that was the second preseason game. Yeah, it was, yeah one of the preseason games where J. Webb Nation, Jamarcus Webb, got completely abused, and Aaron Cromer had enough. Well, I'm keep going back to the Mark Tressman era. Had had enough, and here comes Jordan Mills. Let's hope it's not the Mark Tressman era. No, come on. It already feels different than that. Um. I mean, this is this is it's honestly fascinating. I don't I I could not tell you right now with any degree of certainty who the tackles will be tomorrow at practice. Because one of the things we Riley Reef can play left or right. It's true. And is he even up to speed? Is he? But to, they don't know the offense. They just to, he's but, signed today. But to your point, up to speed. How about up to strength? Like yeah. literally up to speed. How fast is he on the field? How does he move? All those physical things you need to play on the edges. But to your point, I think tomorrow we see an offensive line of Braxton Jones, Cody Whitehair, Lucas Patrick, Sam Mustafer, and Larry Borum. The same thing they left OTAs with. Okay. And then they say uh, the two guys we signed aren't quite ready to go. Again, and we've been then they before. use that as an excuse when they're, they're literally really... catching up to speed. That's what they're yeah. going to say. They're learning the playbook. Yeah. They like where they're at. Increasing the competition. Here we go. Uh, but you know what? 
If it leads to better protection than what was projected with Sam Mustafer in there, or the ups and downs of a rookie in Braxton Jones, or even the ups and downs of a second-year guy in Larry Borum, if it leads to upgrades, less sacks, more time for Justin Fields, fine, all, all for it. We've been saying since the beginning of this Ryan Poles era that Justin Fields needs more help. They signed some help. Yeah. Capable, experienced help. I mean, I think you feel better about the offensive line room today than you did a couple days ago. 100%. Yeah. It's still... Because that was one of the things that... And we were part of the group, I think, that said, preach some patience here. Let's see what it looks like when training came. There, there was a lot of offensive linemen out there this year that were like, I'm not signing until July. There's no reason to. And I'm cool with that. Good for them. They're veterans, and they don't need to go through the offseason program. They can hang out with their families as long as they, as long as they stay in shape. Um, but you're looking at that offensive line in OTAs at times, and it's great they got those reps, but they're not wearing pads. So I don't... And you're just going, if this doesn't work out, who's playing? And then Dakota Dozier gets hurt, who wasn't even a great option to begin with. And then you're like, well, now who are they going to sign? And they don't sign anybody. There was a Dakota Dozier question today. Oh, yeah. Snuck in there. Who has that question? Andy from AP. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also, for a while, he was your starting right guard, though. Again, that's why Michael Schofield has value, though. I mean, personally, I would not, if I was Ryan Poles, I would not have been ready for a Dakota Dozier question today. <laughs> but at the, at the same time... I don't think he was even when he, like, 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 who? With all due respect to the Dakota you, Dozier, but, like, you know where that... Yes. But typically when Up players here. tear... But typically when players tear their ACL, you say they tear their ACL. That's not like a uncommon thing. But they don't want to even say what it was. Okay. Well, to your point about Ryan Poles, I think we learned a little bit about how he's going to interact with us. If there are contracts to be discussed, negotiations to be discussed, injuries, even with a guy like Dakota Dozier, yeah, who was a bubble guy to begin with, who tore his ACL during OTAs and is on injured reserve or will be. Um, he didn't want to talk about it. Like he prefaced his discussions about Roquan Smith, at least the questions that were coming through during his opening statement. Like, I'm not going to discuss details. And he stuck with that answer at every question that he got about Roquan Smith. Yeah, and that's not new. Most GMs don't want to talk about situations when contract situations when they're in negotiations because that can always be held against them. Yes. You Although know. they did go out and say that they love the guy. That's also pretty typical, though. They believe in the guy. Yeah. Do you think that that situation gets resolved? Well, I'm trying to see both sides of it. If you're the Bears, you know you're overhauling this roster. You know some of these guys are worth the second contract. Roquan Smith, maybe David Montgomery, right? But at the same time, you have not seen them actually play one game. One game what Matt Eberflus wants to do defensively. Yeah, He's learning a new position. Hell, last time we saw Roquan Smith, he wasn't even calling the defensive plays at OTAs. It was Nicholas Morrow. Right. So I understand where they're coming from, where you want to let this thing play out a bit. But at the same time, I see Roquan Smith's side, where he wants to protect his health, protect his value, protect his future production by not risking further injury or, or what have you during training camp. We all know how good Roquan Smith can be. I think he transcends scheme. Sure, there'll be a transition period, but he's good enough, great enough to be good in this defense. He might actually fit it better than the 3 4 he learned under Vic Fangio and Sean Desai. Yeah. But he still tell you it's, it's taking time. I see both sides. We also don't know. 
how they value that position compared to others. When you start talking about where you want to allocate your funds. Well, if Chris Bale or Dementor for Ryan Poles, and Matt Eberflus knows the value of what having an outstanding weak side linebacker can mean for his defense, see Darius Leonard. Then, yes, they're willing to put significant resources into that position. Darius yeah. Leonard set the market last year, makes $19.7 million per year with his new contract extension. Do you reset the market with Roquan Smith, 19.8? 20 million? I don't know if the Bears are ready to do that right now at the start of training camp. I just don't. Now, I don't want to diminish Darius Leonard at all. He's a phenomenal football player. Did you happen to notice that nugget that Eberflus dropped when he was talking about next man up and how on Christmas Day last year, Darius Leonard didn't play in Arizona? And I don't even know who he was referring to, but he said that another linebacker came in and they didn't skip a beat. I think, and I'm not necessarily saying this, but I think those that sort of diminish that interior linebacker position compared to pass rushers, because getting after quarterbacks more important, um, kind of look at them as replaceable. Like, like yeah, the number the one job is to come in and make contract. tackles. Yes, but, they, but Colts still gave him that. You right, know, but I guess what I'm I, I, nearly twenty million dollars your contract. What I'm saying, but Matt Eberflus didn't. He's just the defensive coordinator. What I'm saying is, is I'm just playing devil's advocate because I think that they should pay Roquan Smith. I think he's that good. I'm constantly talking about how he's underrated and doesn't get enough respect. What I'm just saying is, um, from the coordinator's perspective, who's now the head coach of the Bears he may think like it's a more replaceable position. I don't know. And I don't know how Ryan Poles thinks about it. Ryan Poles wasn't in Indy. Ryan Poles has had, uh, what was that guy's name? Blake Sorensen at linebacker in that Chiefs defense? No, it's Daniel Sorensen. I think Daniel Sorensen was the safety next to um, I swear he played linebacker. the Honey Badger. Yeah. I guess that's my point, though. They don't have Darius Leonard running around in Kansas City. They have they had Tyree Kill and all his offensive weapons, right? Well, this is the discussion. Look, if you're tiering where the money goes, it starts at quarterback. Then you get offensive tackle. You have pass rushers, cornerback, and receiver. Those are your premier positions that need to be invested in. Where linebacker fits varies by team. It's like running back varies yeah. by team. Safety varies by team. Can I, can I read this quote from? Eberflus, um, no, from April 20th. I'm putting on my glasses because I'm becoming an old man. This is Matt Eberflus, uh, 420. Mm. I would say Roquan playing the position that he's in, playing inside lab, playing inside linebacker for us is a huge role. Erlocker and Briggs were big components to the great defense they've had here in the past, and that's going to be no different. We're looking for those same type of guys. We want a pair. They're really dominant in there, and we're going to work towards that. Roquan is in those plans, so we're excited about where he is. That is from April 20th from Matt Eberflus. Yeah. And we know the Bears invested in 54 and 55. Now, there are some contentious negotiations, if I remember correctly, with both of them. They also were never able to put enough offensive weapons out there. It's true. So I think that's that's all I'm getting at is playing devil's advocate. Like I am all on board with paying Roquan Smith. The guy's 25. You give him a five year deal right now, you're getting in and out before that 30 year old drop off that always comes with linebackers. Okay, because that's what you got. But you're in and out with that. You're and you're probably in your window of winning in those five years. You better be, or you got other problems. So I'm all on board with paying him the money. I think he deserves it. Um, I'm sure the Bears will come back and be like, well, you haven't, you don't have the same accolades that Darius Leonard have, has. You've been second team all pro. He's been first team all pro. You haven't been going, going to the Pro Bowls. And if I'm Roquan Smith, who, you know, is in the awkward spot of negotiating for himself, I'm like, yeah, but I got snubbed. Look at all these tweets from Adam Hogan, Adam Johns, who keeps saying that I'm snubbed. You know, right? 
Damn it, Flus, go look at my coverage stats and pro football reference. They're better than Darius Leonard's. That. And then and then Ryan Pauls is like, F those guys. I don't even smile when I talk to them in the press conference. You know, I don't want to be there. Fair Good for enough. Dion Miller. For <laughs> I missed that interaction. I was on the other side of the pack room. Uh, Dion, I don't even remember what her question was, to be honest with you. But she was like... Uh, Something about somebody being more excited to talk than, than her, her just, her just look, the reality was Ryan Poles had probably not smiled in 20 minutes and she kind of called him out for it, uh, for like being bored and not wanting to talk to us, which by the way is completely fair. I mean, I don't, wouldn't want to talk to me either, but, um, well, by Roke one Smith question number six, he was probably done with it. Yeah. I totally understand it. Hey, I'm not going to talk about Roquan Smith. Seven Roquan Smith questions later, I'd be a little annoyed. I a couple, you know, questions sprinkled in there about the offensive line, and then bam, right back at you, Roquan Smith. I get it. I'm not making a big deal out of this. I just thought it was funny, and I love Dion Miller. She's one of our favorite guests and OGs on this podcast. So uh, I just want to give her credit for that. And uh, I totally lost my train of thought now, and cannot remember what that's to do with. Oh, the Roquan Smith negotiations. Um, it's tough. I mean, cause, okay. So here's the example that's been thrown out there. I do not think it's realistic, um, necessarily, but just straight up, if you could trade Roquan Smith for DK Metcalf, would you do it? That's a good question. Understanding that in that trade, Roquan's getting a new contract from the Seahawks. You're the bears. You're now paying DK Metcalf. Basically, instead of having stud linebacker, you're trading him for stud wide receiver that you are instead spending that money on. Um. Okay, if you're tiering positions, and you have Justin Fields on your team, who needs help? Yes, most teams would tier wide receiver, especially in today's NFL, over linebacker. And in that case, then if I'm running a team, yes, I would probably do it. But that's a extremely difficult decision it really is that which i think it's back to the original point that you made that i 100 percent agree with you this is a this is a um not to like both sides of the conversation but like i see it from both sides yeah i completely understand why ryan poles is like yeah, we want to sign you, but we need to see you in this defense before we're giving you Darius Leonard money. And on the other side, Roquan's going, cool, I ain't getting hurt during August. That's stupid. You would save money by investing in Roquan Smith over DK Metcalf, though. You think DK costs more? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Like $10 million more per year. I was just, I just took me a little bit, but I just pulled up the average annual values of the top receivers. What are they now? I mean, you're talking about here it is 30 million for Tyreek Hill. 20. Yeah. I mean the contracts, so this was the yeah. year of the wide receivers getting paid. Yes. Yeah. So he's got to be 27 plus. Holy shit. That's a lot of money. Yes. And by the way, there's a lot of wide receivers going to be available next off season, but you're going to be paying that kind of money. And, and, you know, so you know funny, I'm, I'm keeping Roquan Smith. I, I'll be honest. I think it's harder to find a three down off the ball linebacker who's good in coverage against tight ends and running backs can handle a slot receiver occasionally than it is to find a wide receiver. I feel like every year there's more receivers taken in the first two rounds and off the ball linebackers. And there's reason for it. Yes. The college game has changed, but it's also easier to identify them. There's more of them. There's just more. So I would stick with Roquan Smith. I changed my mind. Okay. Team Roquan. Okay, I'm team Roquan too, just for the record. Um, and another thing that I think gets ignored way too much when we talk about this guy, okay? He, one, he's durable. Okay, he hasn't missed a game since 2019. Showed up on the scene, first game, sacked quarterback, right? So he has uh, 43 TFLs which doesn't get talked about enough. This guy lives in the backfield for a linebacker. He might not be a pass rusher. He had 18 tackles for loss two years ago. He had 12 last year. Okay. Uh, 
he has 14. So let's see. I, I'm not a math major as we have. Uh, well, so 14 sacks in his career, 43 TFLs. So that's 57 sacks slash TFLs in 61 games. He's basically averaging one of those per game. So not just all the tackles he's racked up, which, oh, by the way, is 524 in four seasons, but every game you're guaranteed to get at least one big play in the backfield, either a sack or a big TFL. And that's in the pass defense. So depending on how he's using this defense, perhaps as that will linebacker, that, that number could be even higher. That's that's what I'd be arguing in that awkward conversation if I'm Roquan Smith. Did you see that stat from C- CBS Sports on Twitter? No. Like they're always good for like these obscure Mitch Trubisky stats. Like they seem. Oh to yeah, come they up were the people. the Trubisky uh, champ. It, like it, it, I think that became a bit. Yes. Where somebody yes. at CBS Sports was like, every week I'm going to put out some stat that makes it look like Mitch Trubisky is really good. Like I'm going to spend my entire day doing this. No, don't care. What a job. Well, anyway, last week they had this one. Last two players with 300-plus tackles and 30-plus tackles for loss in a two-year span in NFL history. Roquan Smith, 2020-2021, and Ray Lewis, 1999-2000. Put him in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and you can't ignore what what he's become with. Like Jalen Johnson said it today, what Roquan Smith has become for this team off the field, the leader, the example. I mean, there's a reason why he was the guy in the orange outfit, the orange helmet. That Face part was hilarious to me, by the way. Or oh, like a day after. <laughs> then on Sunday, they announced the first new helmet in Bears history, by the way, right? They've only had a Navy helmet their entire life. The logo's changed a little bit, but for the most part, it's been the Navy blue helmet with the C on it, uh, with the C being very, you know, varying shapes and colors. Because remember, they wore that white C a uh, couple years ago against the Giants? But the first time they've had a different colored helmet, Roquan Smith's the guy, right? Which makes sense. And then the next day, Oquan Smith not going to practice contract issue. I got a kick out of that. The business side of the sport. Yeah. All right, Hogan Johns listeners, let's talk about a really cool product. Let's talk about Athletic Greens. If you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, or a stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, you've got to check out Athletic Greens. I'm sure you all agree that most of us are not huge fans of having to take a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning. You might forget. All right, what is this stuff? Well, one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you would be absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the things, all the things we need to get through training camp, quite frankly. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially when you start heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Adams. That is, again, athleticgreens.com slash Adams to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay, let's be honest. Who doesn't love cereal? The crunch, the sweetness, the way you can accidentally eat a whole box or sneak it as a midnight snack. Well, then you grew up and all the adult cereals were boring, maybe tasted bland and got soggy. Well, that's where Magic Spoon comes in because it's got all that stuff you love from your childhood, but it's healthy. 
Magic Spoon has innovated and changed the game with sugary cereals. They spent time to perfect the crunchy texture and develop an astounding variety of flavors so that they always hit the spot, but without any of the things that are bad for you. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. It's low-carb, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and only 140 calories a serving. You can build your own box with a huge variety of appealing flavors. I got the classics like cocoa, fruity, frosted peanut butter, then those cult favorites like blueberry muffin, maple waffle, which I especially like, and then they also have the indulgent ones like cookies and cream, cinnamon roll. Just go to magicspoon.com slash Adam to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try the magic for yourself. Be sure to use our promo code Adam at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Adam. Use that code Adam to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 110 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash adam. That's linkedin.com slash adam to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. What do you think about the orange helmets? I like them. I have no problem with them whatsoever. I just... On the orange jerseys, I don't... I'm very split on this. I really, I really don't know what to think. I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. It so doesn't what? bother like me. Every team's coming up with something. Yeah. You know George loves orange. It's, it's like shoes are orange. George McCaskies, I'm talking about. Yeah. I know. He likes it. It's my understanding that it was his, his decision. I have no Dwight, problem with it. Dwight Payne had some very orange shirts, shorts, uh, shorts, uh, shoes today, not shorts. Okay, what was it? Shoes or shorts? <laughs> <laughs> it was shoes, and they were very orange. The ABC7 cameraman. Photog. Love Dwight. Um, Dwight. Like George's shoes? George McCaskey's shoes? Even oranger. Oranger. Okay. Like, they were, like, bright orange. I think he was wearing the sun on his feet. I liked them, though. I was actually, there were some Nikes. I'm like, I might pick up some of those. I like them. Uh, okay. My only beef with the helmets, and it's not really beef. I just think it's a missed opportunity. I've always, it, it, when they when it came out that the NFL was going to allow secondary helmets, I thought it would be cool if the Bears secondary helmet had the Bear logo on it. And I think that that would have been a cool opportunity to do that. Um, the C is cool. I don't have a problem with the C. Like, what if they had the Bear head instead of the C? That's order. what I'm saying. I think it would be cool. No? How about the walking bear on the bear's helmet? Well, now we're talking about next level. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. That's going to be a thing when the Hogan Johns owned AFC team moves into Soldier Field there we after go. the bears vacated. Okay. And it's going to be called Hogan Johns Field. No. No, I'll still be Soldier Field. Yes. Well, we'd be renting. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, okay. Quickly on that. Just because all these teams want to own their new stadiums now does not mean that there's not going to be 10 owners still in the league. Like, I don't want to deal with that hassle. I'll take a a deal from the city where I have cheap rent. Like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right. With an owner who likes orange helmets because he played... Or you went to the University of Illinois? Whew. So, yeah, speaking my language now. Now, from that standpoint, 
if if the Bears leave and the city still miraculously builds this cool looking stadium that was rendered uh, in those tweets yesterday, uh, which looks completely unrealistic for a Chicago built stadium in a city that consistently screws up stadiums. Uh, honestly, blew me away. See, my looks first thought. In, so if you're watching us on YouTube, yeah, it blows you away a little bit. But my it's pretty cool. Thought, on this picture that we're seeing right now in the podcast, look at those lines out the door. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. We got to work on. There's got to be more entrances. Come on. Yes. yes. They, they should that. know that there's one on, on the other side here, you know, Lake, by Lakeshore Drive. But j- just saying. Also, the, long lines. is there a press box built in this new stadium, which is actually <laughs> still the old stadium? Is that updated or no? One of those up there. Still no press box. Um. Anyway, what I was going to say is if in a f- weird fantasy world where the Bears leave and the city still manages to do this with this crazy looking cool soldier field, which I agree, it looks way better than I thought they could come up with. I just, it's too bad it wasn't built 20 years well, it's, ago. But. It's also better than the renderings like from a couple weeks ago where they use right. like Photoshop Kitty Holmes <laughs> walking down the street at a farmer's market or something yeah, with, their, with their daughter. That. Like that was bad. That was bad. That was pretty bad. Professional to do this one. These look good. Also, if if they're going to have these open end zones, they need to make it like um, um, U.S. Bank Stadium where it opens. Like the roof doesn't open, but you know what I'm talking about? At the end zone, the doors open. I think their plans for this were like a giant flap that you just kind of roll. Bad joke. Like a, like a, uh, (laughs) like a, um, the hell you call those things like they come over your deck yes like the cranker thing like a sunshade <laughs> sunshade that's what i'm going for yeah, sunshade sun setter shades yes yeah that'll that, 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 that's included big time sponsorship great get by sun setter yeah sponsored by um uh what's that backyard company i don't remember mosquito american joe? sale american sales one of them mosquito joe mosquito joe in all seriousness, though, okay, this all feels just really too late. It feels like the Bears are they're gone, everybody. Chicago, they're leaving. It's happening. Yeah, but the mayor doesn't think the fans will follow them to Arlington. <laughs> I can't even get that out of my mouth without laughing. Without laughing. Like they're they're leaving. They this- want their own place. The Bears could play 17 road games a year and the fans would still follow them to all the games. True. It's true. They're just going to Arlington Heights. They're not moving We've covered to St. Some, Louis. some very bad Bears teams. And the amount of Bears fans that they see on the road, they get on the road, it's, it's still impressive. Yeah. Okay. I want to quickly, though, address the idea of another team potentially using Soldier Field. Yeah, Chicago Fire. Chicago Fire. Again, in this weird fantasy world that Chicago's never pulled off, that they somehow build this amazing new stadium, even though the Bears have left. Hell yeah, if I'm the Jaguars, I'd want to be like, hey, that looks like a cool opportunity. Now, here's a couple problems that I want people to be aware of in the NFL, Okay. The McCaskies are not necessarily the most powerful owners in the league. They sure as hell have some say. They are very respected by the owner, other owners, by the commissioner. So remember, when a team moves, that needs to be approved by the rest of the league. Do you see a scenario in which right now, as currently constructed, that the rest of the NFL and the owners would be like, yeah, okay, you can encroach on the Bears' territory because no. you know you know the Bears would be like, hell no, that's not happening. No. And and in the wake of the Bears getting full support from the NFL and the rest of the owners to build their own brand-new stadium out in the suburbs, they're not going to then be punished by those same owners by having somebody move in next door. So that's where I just cannot fathom that happening within the next, let's say, 15 to 20 years. I ever. I wouldn't say ever because if the Chicago if, Cardinals coming back, if and I do not, I would not sh- 
Do you think the McCaskies are still on the team 20 years from now? Because I'll be honest, I'm on the side that thinks they build a new stadium that eventually they sell. They sell. Maybe some distant relative. Maybe the house is coming. I, I don't know. A lot of unknowns here. I know where the McCaskies stand this day and tomorrow and the next 10, 15 years, 20 yeah. years. But I guess my point is, as if the McCaskies do this, they manage to build this new stadium on this nice. As long as they own the team, I cannot imagine another team being able to move in at Soldier Field. Just the politics within the league. Can't see it happen. Now, new ownership? If somebody else buys the team? Now, of course, if I were to buy the team, I'd also want it in writing. Uh, I don't want another team moving in next to me either. But that being said, there's going to be so much competition for the Bears if they were to ever sell that you might not get that guarantee. So that's why I'm saying maybe not ever. I still think there's this respect for the Bears of what they mean to the league in its in itself. Founding franchise, Papa Bear Hallis. Say what you want about the McCaskies, whatever. Still the Chicago Bears. Still will be the Chicago Bears in Arlington Heights. And I think that will be respected in every when whenever someone comes in there with with the interest of moving a team or founding a team in Chicago. Yeah, well, let's also be honest. I can't imagine that that stadium is being built. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with with or without the Bears, True. that would be an upset. A publicly funded stadium in Chicago that looks like that. Yeah. Not happening. Uh, then Mayor Lightfoot, this, this, she should be the mayor forever then. Some of it feels like a last-ditch effort to throw some mud on the face of the Bears, and it's just not working. It's not working at all. No, like I love how this. I am surprised at how unanimous this really is. There are definitely people out there who don't want to see the Bears leave Chicago, but I feel like 99% of the people in this conversation completely understand why they would be. Yes. They Even want if they don't want place. them to. They want their yeah. own place. Now, should the White Sox play there? Now we're talking. Yeah. Well, that's different. If that's the case, don't care. <laughs> wow. That's not nice. We'll see how much you don't care when the White Sox are the ones that have the uh, venue where you can have a Final Four in the city. Uh -huh. And then now that's competition for the Bears. Now that is you're dreaming. No, no, no. I'm being serious, though. If there was a world where they could still build that and all of a sudden these um, Big Ten Championship games, NCAA playoff games, whatever, Final Four, actually get played in Chicago instead of the New Arlington Heights Stadium, now that would be good revenge from the mayor to the Bears for leaving. Oh, said he's got his work cut out for itself. Legit competition. The NFL might pro not provide that competition by moving a team there, but they once the Bears leave, they don't control what the hell goes on down there. No. So maybe there'll be a Hogan Johns XFL team. <laughs> They're still around. It is. They announced the teams uh, the other Wait, day. Is that, is that what the Rocks in? Oh yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Um, they announced the teams the other day. Chicago does not have a team. The See? Chicago enforcers are not coming back. I forgot about them. Yeah. I can't name a single player from the Chicago enforcers, but good times. Hey, um, anything else from today's happenings at House Hall? I do think it feels different for Justin Fields. Like, he doesn't really want to come out and... Like, say it, say it. But it's pretty obvious, right? It's been pretty obvious for a couple months now. What? Remember how awkward last year was? Oh, just like how much last year was shitty for him? Yeah. Like yeah, how yeah. training camp was a waste of time? Do I have to swear yeah. again? No, we all understand that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not a waste of time anymore. <laughs> that's like when... Uh, that when in itself uh, is a great thing for the Chicago Bears. Yeah, that's an upgrade. Training camp, not a waste of time anymore. Congratulations. No, I'm being serious, though. That is a good thing. Like you want um, some positive, like I, I feel like our YouTube watchers get like, get on us for not being a little more positive. You want some positive thoughts? Andy Dalton's not here anymore. 
<laughs> like just like Justin Fields with all the questions at receiver, offensive line, he's getting like nearly every rep. Trevor Simeon, yeah, will get one or two. Nathan Peterman, you know, he should get days off. He won't, but like he should. And but and they brought real live offensive linemen who have played a lot of NFL snaps into play in front of Justin Fields. That's a good development. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, he said he feels better about it. He says he feels more confident about it. It should, like everything about it should feel different for him. Knowing that he's the guy and the benefit of being the guy who gets 95% of the reps. Where he doesn't have to stay late after practice to get reps in with Darnell Mooney. He doesn't have to do that anymore. He can if he wants. But now he gets them in actual practices against opponents instead of doing it on air. Okay. So it's all good things for Justin Fields. Can I run this take by you then that I've I put out on the CHGO show yesterday? Is it hot or like semi hot? I don't think it's hot. It's just an expectation. Okay. Do you think it's fair for me to say with everything you just laid out? And we understand that pretty much every player in that locker room will say the most positive things about Justin Fields. There's no doubt he's the leader. This is his team, right? Yeah. He's got all the intangibles, it seems like. He has all the talent in the world, right? Are we, we Everybody agree on that? Agree. Blow me away in training camp. Is that unfair? For once in my life covering this team, Johns, I want to see a quarterback go out there and just blow me away in training camp. Like, How soon we forget Jay Cutler's interception free streak back okay, but, in 2014. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm kidding. I know I what you're you. saying. I don't think I you're going to you. get it, though. I don't think you're yeah. going to get it. I would settle for a few days of that. Because well, I, I think, think there needs to be more consistency overall, less up and ups and downs. There's going to be downs, and that's not what I'm saying. Like I know there's going to be bad days. There always are in training camp. That goes for everybody. But I'm just saying, like, two weeks from now, why is it unfair for us to sit there and be like, I expect the quarterback to live up to, this isn't like some second round pick that we're reaching on here. Like, oh, is he going to be the guy? He's not. No, this was the dude they went up and got. And he got put in a completely shitty, unfair situation last year. And I'm willing to give him all pass for that. But now he's set up in a new offense that should be tailored to his strengths and less towards his weaknesses like that one last year, go out and blow me away in training camp. I don't think that that's unfair. It only seems unfair, Johns, because we've never seen it happen. Probably right. The only, if I'm going to play devil's advocate with you, is this is all new for Luke Getze as well. Yeah. So, like, even if, like, Justin Fields feels good about what he's doing, maybe the other guys are off. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you have this in training camp where Justin Fields seemingly overthrows like a corner route or something, a seven route or something like that, right? But you know what? Maybe the route wasn't exactly where it was supposed to be. Sure, he's got to adjust the the flight of his ball, the trajectory that is expected at some point. But with all these different receivers, two new tight ends go along with Cole Komet, a new play caller, implementing a new scheme, building a new scheme essentially. Like that in itself. I don't think it'll create that blowing away quality that you want, at least not initially. Maybe a few practices that way, but like in its entirety, I don't know if you're going to get that. I really I'd don't. be curious to know um, what Justin Herbert looked like in training camp last year. Maybe we need to get somebody on from the Chargers. I was going to say, it sounds like we need to get some guests on here. Let me get some answers. Joe Burrow? Um... Yeah, that's another thing. I and I don't know. We don't. We I'm, I've never been to a Cincinnati Bengals training camp. They were on hard knocks one year. Um, the Chargers were on hard knocks one year. I think Herbert's rookie year, maybe. I think that was Herbert's rookie year. Anyway, point being, I don't see their practices on a daily basis. What Josh Allen, his breakout year with the Bills? What did he look like? Oh, in camp? Like, it sounds like we have a show coming together. Oh, finally. There we go. <laughs> uh, great idea though. 
yeah, I'd like to get that perspective on like, and maybe because maybe I'm off base. Maybe maybe we check in on those teams and they're like, yeah, you know what? It was actually up and down, and then all of a sudden Herbert went out there week one last year and just started lighting up yeah. the joint. Well, well, I, I think Burrow and Allen are great cases because that's almost the trajectory you have for now with Justin Fields. Like Herbert was good as a rookie. Like most quarterbacks, when you first see them, like you know they're going to be good because they're playing good. Deshaun Watson, yeah. Patrick Mahomes, right? That's why. Things felt so uneven with Mitch Trubisky. He didn't have the instant success that those guys had. Josh Allen took three years to become Josh Allen. Joe Burrow didn't have a good offensive line his rookie year. Different story year two. All right, we're going to work on this for you. I like this. I like this. Last thing I have before we... um, Two things I have. First of all, before I forget, I want to give the shout out. Remember this guy? Our guy Kyle Higgins. Can yeah. you see that or no? Yeah. You need glasses? glasses on. Yeah. I was looking up a stat anyway. No, let's just remember because we had Kyle and um, Lance, Briggs, Lance on. Briggs on the show a little while ago now, uh promoting their comic book that they were putting together. And it arrived. I got it. Oh, it's cool. Kyle. It's awesome. Yo, 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 yo. I paid money for this, man. Big, oh, it's right. I supported I, the project. I should do that. I should do that. <laughs> Look at me feeling really bad. No, it wasn't a giveaway, man. Um, I just thought it was cool. And I was I was checking it out. I, I was I, interested when we were talking about it with it. Yeah. I'll pick it up. I will admit, though, I am not a comic book guy. I think we talked to Kyle about this. And I think I need, like, a lesson on how to read these things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what order do I read? Come this? on, man. I know it's really bad. Come on, it was hard enough to push me into the uh the MCU. Yeah. And I, I'm all in, but they I can't a, keep they up. A, they had a big announcement. There's a lot of movies and shows coming out. You got a lot to catch up on. I can't what I can't keep up. It's it's insane. you don't need sleep. Just watch it at night. When do you think I work on uh, practice plans and Practice scripts and you'll be fine. You just coach special teams. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> what else? Go ahead. I'm listening. Um, Trey Lance, officially 49ers guy. We knew that. Who, ha- who has the quarter? Yeah, we know. Who has the quarterback edge week one? Oh, it's Justin Fields. Okay. Because he was got all, all that experience he got last year not practicing. At least he got something <laughs> during the regular season, though. <laughs> so here, I was thinking about this coming over from Dallas today. Um, because, look, he has got the experience. He's also going to a new offense. So the I think the flip, I think the flip side argument for Trey Lance is at least he's been in the same system for two years. Granted, he didn't play in it last year. And he's also been with Kyle Shanahan for two years. Like, which quarterback got drafted in a better situation? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's what no a, question Trey Lance was drafted into a better situation. Like, one of the best play callers in modern NFL, yeah. Now, the other side of that argument is Trey Lance hasn't played in, like, three years. Remember, he didn't play. He played one game in 2020 because North Dakota State didn't have a season. They had an exhibition game, so he could get drafted number two overall. All right? And then... So Fields was at least playing that year for Ohio State, had a great year. Um, so we're talking about a guy who really hasn't played in two years. So I would definitely go like, oh, Justin Fields. Then again, I mean, if Trey Lance is good, oh, man, I'd rather be in the 49er system developing than what the Bears have been. I think it's an interesting conversation. But for like a time. week one matchup. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields should have the edge over Trey Lance, even with some of the changes around him, given his his experience last year. It should matter to a certain extent. Just remember, Debo Samuel is going to be playing on Lance's side. Darn good football player. Because that was the other news that came out. It sounds like they're getting close on a contract there. So, Debo won't be a bear. Breaking news. But that DK Metcalf dream is still alive, huh? Might still be on my fantasy team, though. Get me to another second place finish for the fifth year in a row. 
I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. And again, nobody cares. No, don't care. All right, we're out of here. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. It's good to be back. Good to have football back. And when we're back Thursday, we will have practices to actually talk about. Two. Two practices yeah. to talk about. So, um, yeah. Now, pad practices won't be until the weekend, but we'll get there eventually. We'll have an idea of how all these random offensive linemen line up and all these random wide re- You know what name we haven't talked about really is Nikhil Harry. So, We'll see what he can do, and maybe he'll stand out and practice for a day or two. I'm at least a little intrigued by that. I'm not, yeah, very, yeah. I'm not very hopeful about it, but I'm intrigued. Come up with some interesting to say about him. You know, he's it's a second chance. Yeah. Second opportunity. Things didn't work out for the New England Patriots. Right. Another missed draft pick by them, by the way. So let's yep. see what the Bears get out of him. Well, they're starting to add up over there. Oh, aren't they ever? Not Mac Jones, though. Bill Belichick's all in. He loves himself some Mac Jones. Mac Jones. We'll see about that, too, later in the year. Mac Jones. One of the underrated parts of the season is all the 2021 quarterback matchups there are. Oh, I do like that, yes. Including Davis Mills in week three, assuming Jimmy Garoppolo isn't the quarterback for the Houston Texans by then. They now. Give us Davis Mills. They sure have done a good job of making the making everybody think they like Davis Mills. He was secretly good last year. Was he higher than Justin Fields and Mike Sandoz QB tiers? I don't think he was. I don't think so. They're close though. Yeah. Mac Jones was higher. Same. Trevor Lawrence was higher. All right. Uh I gotta get out of here. I gotta go practice. Just special teams, though. Maybe I don't need to go. Just 10 minutes. According to you. Hey, Chris Tabor gets what he needs done in about five minutes. So No, he luck. doesn't. He gets 20. <laughs> it is a very condensed period of time. I think fans, when they come to camp or practices, are pretty amazed how tight some of those practice windows are. Yeah. I'm wondering, are they still going to do special teams at the end? or I feel like they've been doing them at the beginning of practice under the new regime. Right, here's Kent. Justin Fields was 25 in the QB tiers. Davis Mills, 27. I think Fields will be better than 15 in next year's QB tier. It's flirting with tier two. Flirting with tier tier two. two. This is why like people think I'm like being unfair to Fields, like blowing me away. These are my own high expectations for the guy. It's a compliment. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Hoke. At Adam Johns, read Johnsy on the Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns is where you go to subscribe. You can read Kevin Fishbane too and all their coverage from opening day of Bears training camp report day. Uh, John Greenberg was there too. He was there. That's how you know it's a big day when John Greenberg shows up and fresh off his vacation too. Where was he? I saw some of his stuff in California. I saw, I saw some of his vacation photos. Um, see, even he plans his vacation around football. I'm going on one next week. <laughs> yeah, the, unlike you. Where are you going again next week? I'm not going anywhere. Someone had that joke on Twitter where, like, you know, Bears beat writers, you know, you know, say goodbye to their families until, you know, next April. Yeah. Adam Johns goes on vacation. <laughs> Wait, I swear good. you were going on vacation, though. I'm not. No. Maybe I was just assuming you were because you usually do. Usually it's like right before they report. But we did that trip in June. Oh. No, instead I went out of town right before. You did what I did. And in because the you didn't, you just decided to text me all week. It's true. Right. <laughs> Remember that time you went to Ireland for a week or something right when training game started? Well, that was like a family reunion. Oh, okay. Then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I forgot about that. I need a family reunion in Ireland. I'm actually going to miss the third preseason game because I'm going to be at a wedding. Ah, it's like the Kevin Fishbane excuse. That man has been more, to more weddings than, I mean, I think I know people. <laughs> That's why I still sometimes think Kevin's like 27. Because, like, shouldn't he be out of that wedding range? Like, I had a year where we had 11 weddings in one year, but that was in like 2010. Yeah. It was a long time ago. 12 years ago. 
What's with his friends is all getting married now? Or there's already like their second weddings. Apparently, Kevin Fishbane is a popular man with a lot of friends of various ages. Maybe that's the problem. We just don't have enough friends. True. That's actually probably the answer. Yeah. Kevin is a very friendly, nice guy who should have lots of friends. That's probably the nicest thing I've ever said on this podcast. It's true. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're out of here. All right. We'll talk to you guys Thursday. Enough of this stuff. Talk to you later. See ya.